That's of course Gustavo, the big breaking news across the world of football, the announcement that Neymar has torn his ACL. Could, no, in your opinion, should this then be the indicator that Brazil need to move on from Neymar going forward, that if they're going to succeed, they need to put Neymar and his time with Brazil behind them? Hello then, hello everybody. Well, now Brazil will have to move on without Neymar. Neymar won't play uh, football for the next at least eight months with, uh, with his torn ACL and also meniscus. It's a very serious injury. Neymar will be out at least eight months. So from now on, Brazil will have to move on without his star, without his main players, as Rodrigo said some days ago. But Brazil had many, many problems with Neymar uh, on the field. Uh, we, 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 can, we can say that Brazil lost to Uruguay because, he, because the team lost Neymar. It didn't happen this way. Brazil had no creativity. It was one of the poorest matches I've ever seen of Brazil. In Brazil, people are saying that this is the worst national team for Brazil ever. I don't think wow. so. I've already seen some 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 other teams of Brazil that were, were, were terrible. But for sure, the match yesterday against Uruguay was one of the poorest that I've ever seen of Brazil. Only two shot attempts, known shots on goal. Uh, the Uruguayan goalkeeper, Roche, didn't make any save, any save during the 90 minutes. So, yes, it was a very, very poor match of Brazil. Fernando Diniz has some problems to, to implement his ideas after so many years of these players playing for Tite. And Fernando Diniz thinks the football in a different way from Tite. And now he's struggling. Um, not not just a little bit, a lot with the team after this loss for Uruguay and also the draw with Venezuela. It's kind of sad in Italy. Mm. As, as, as you know, we grow up watching Neymar. We know how good he can mm. be on his day. And obviously the downfall has been something that we've talked about a lot from the move to PSG to get out of Messi's shadow to failing to turn up maybe in some of Brazil's big games in the past. And now we're in a situation that this could legitimately be his last game. Yeah, it certainly is a sad ending to what should have been. And I, I don't want to say uh, a more productive career because Neymar has won a lot and has scored a bunch of goals for the Brazilian national yeah. team. All-time leading goal scorer for Brazil. That counts for something. So it's not that he hasn't been productive. It's that it could have been more. And it should have been more, and he hasn't. Now, the dependence on Neymar... Let's go back nearly, it, I can't believe I'm going to say this, it's, it's almost been a decade since the 2014 yeah. World Cup in Brazil. And if you remember, Neymar was everything and anything for Brazil in that World Cup. He gets injured against Colombia, and it's like the country was falling apart. It's tears everywhere. The players are crying. And you still have a tournament to be played, a semi-final to be played. And we now know how that semi-final ended up in the destruction at the hands of Germany. So you may have thought, okay, well, we have to use this as a starting point for us to, to begin to think, if our superstar is not on the field, how do we continue to be competitive with the talent that we have available? Now, again, this was nearly a decade ago. You spin it forward to Copa America, I believe it was in 2019, and he wasn't available. The Copa America was in Brazil. He had a foot injury. Oh, my goodness, what's it going to happen? Oh, how are we going to deal with this? Brazil actually go on to win the tournament. So it's not like it cannot be done. Yeah. It's not like you cannot put a team together that can be competitive and can win with consistency. We saw that in that Copa America. And yet... Brazil still feels like it's, it's, a, it's all about Neymar, first and foremost, and then we figure out the rest. Well, now the rest has to figure out how to win. And Neymar not being in the picture may just be a blessing in disguise. Now, you don't want this to happen to a, any player at any level at any point in their career. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that, that sort of injury. But for Brazil, if indeed they're thinking about the future, it's now time to think about okay, there's no more Neymar, mm -hmm. how do we move forward? And who are then the players that we can trust that can 
not only create chances for themselves, but to the point that Stevie was making, combination play. Hey, how about a give and go? How about a one-two? How about uh, basic stuff that was not happening in the game against Uruguay? When I'm telling you that there is no combination play, it's like they can't complete three passes in the attacking half without turning the ball over. It's, it, it's incredible to see, and, and believe me, having played against Brazil, it's incredible to see Brazil struggling to keep the ball in the attacking half and to create chances to the point to where whatever you think of expected goals, 0.11 goals expected from Brazil. Two attempts, none on goal. That's Brazil we're talking about. <coughs> One of the best teams in the world on paper. And that's the, the sort of productivity that, or lack thereof that they showed against Uruguay. That was an embarrassing performance. Now there are no excuses for the younger guys. Now they don't have to play for Neymar. Now they have to play for themselves and for the guys around them. Brazil needs to get this stuff together soon.